bring this up. Hello, 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 everyone. Oh, why can't I hear a thing? Bro. Hello, hello, hello. I was all muted up on my Hi. end for some reason. <laughs> hey. Hi, everyone. How are we doing? Hey, bud. Hey. Oh, How are I'm you? Sorry. I'm doing pretty good. Hold on, one of the cameras is broken. Uh, are you? Huh? Uh, there we go, there we go. Hello, uh, welcome out to episode 16, everyone. I did, it was called Thanks. a reset, you know, I was resetting. Uh, oh, shit, sorry, that's, yeah, I didn't mean to ruin it. For yeah, you. no, I'm that's sorry. right, that's right, we'll cut that yeah, out in post. Sorry. Um, cool. Uh, hello, welcome out, everyone. Uh, th it's been a, been, been a while. Uh, we took last week off. Uh, Sam was in Japan, he has returned now. Uh, welcome back, my dude. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a full party <laughs> today. Um, yeah. So uh, we have we've got we do have a hard cow time about quarter past eleven our time or, or quarter past six if you're on the east coast. So uh, we will get started pretty quickly today. But mm -hmm. before we do that, has anyone got anything they want to shout out? Anything they want to announce? Anything they want to do? All that kind of no, cool stuff. Never. No, no, You're there'll be a time. time, man. I'm sorry, no, no, I'm sorry. We okay, got no okay, time for okay, shout outs. Okay. It's my birthday in three days. No, no. Hey. no. There we go. Sorry, Bree. No one, no one wanted to know. Uh, <laughs> wait, what? Bree, when is your birthday? February 7th. Wait, so, Joe, she gets inspiration this session, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Maybe she it is closer to the You should this probably, you should one. probably, yeah, I would wait till the I next should one. Wait. Okay. Because, yeah. I'm not wow. trying to tell you how to live your life, but well, also I mean, definitely I use an inspiration on your wait. short day of, or a shorter day of D&D &D yeah, as opposed yeah, yeah, to one true. where you're more likely to have true. a fight. Um, I want the full session inspo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, uh, since last time we played, we have sheep now. <gasps> hey! Okay, oh. cool. Hey. Yeah. All right. How oh many? God. What are their names? There's two of them. Their names are Coco, Coco and Cashmere. Oh. Nice. Oh, I love that. <laughs> you guys so like Boone and Little Noah's Ark. Like, you get two yeah. new animals every time. <laughs> um, They're like, uh, if you've ever seen Sean the Sheep, they're like Sean yeah, the yeah. Sheep sheep. So they've got like little void faces. You can't tell where their eyes and nose are. Their faces mm. are just totally black. Cute. They're so cute. <laughs> How are they? Are they tiny? Or are they like no. fully grown? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're like ten months old, so they're still young, but they're like they're fully still massive. Grown. Okay. They yeah. could run you over. Yes. And you got chickens as well, right? You got new chickens. Yes. Yes, they're cute. Wait, how are the warehouse chickens? They're good. They're really good. They're they're very sweet. They're all laying eggs. So we're getting four hey. eggs a day, which is oh, wild. Damn. That's nice. Yeah, it's healthy. But, you know, we've got six people on the farm, so they're they're so getting used. So two people every get missed day, out. Get no yeah. eggs. Yeah. <laughs> do you rotate yeah. who doesn't get eggs every day? Sorry, oh it's Friday. Right. <laughs> also, I shaved and forgot to do chat, so they're freaking out. It's a yeah, I know yeah, you look so, yeah, you look so much younger with it. I forgot you had a face underneath the beard. It's, <laughs> yeah, funny. What did you think was under there? <laughs> funny. <laughs> Avoid. Yeah, it's Avoid. true. Just I haven't like seen him sheep. shaving in like years. Um. One of the weirdest things is when you go back and look at like Godforge vod, uh, vods and just look through like the week by week is how people's hair change and then cuts, hair yeah. change, cut, or just like facial hair moving. It's fun. Um, I thought you were going to be like, you all looked so young and fresh faced back then and now. So no. yeah. yeah, that's what I expected. Right. You all looked so young at the start of Godforge. Like, okay. And happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're also full of life. What happened? Right? Mm, I don't know. Well, uh, let's get started with some Dungeons and Dragons then, uh, everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and I'll throw on this tune and turn this stuff down. And we'll get into today's episode uh, to kind of recap Sam about what happened and recap everyone uh, who might not have been here for the last couple of weeks. As rumor has it, your group, an adventuring party in its early formations, had just came out of a literal death dungeon, fighting your way to the end, defeating a creature who had given his uh, embraced nightmares and and eldritch magic. You managed to escape with something hot on your heels chasing you. You closed it in and made your way back to Sigumbra, 
with the knowledge that the apocalypse is coming. Next year, months and months away, but still with the knowledge of it coming in the distance. There in the town, you did a couple of errands before heading off, oh, meeting with Abigail first, but then heading off to the main hall to meet with the mayor. Salandril spoke with you. You handed the orb back, but before you did, you realized he had an attachment to it, an almost addiction. Worried for his safety and your own, Desmond identified the orb and found it wasn't a magical item at all. In fact, it was organic, alive. But those in the town, when they identified it, when they checked in it, seemed to be a magical orb as previously told. With that being said, you agreed to teleport the town. You moved it to all weathers, in the remnants of the Glam Glades. There, with the intention of heading southwest to pursue another vault. The teleportation process, as each of you performed it and were a part of it, was your traditional teleportation magic, conjuration, high-level conjuration, just on a wider scale for the majority of you. But Desmond and Carlisle saw it as far more sinister, chilling. But the meanwhile, at the beginning of the day, something I missed out, is each of you were visited in your dreams. Or, more correctly, in your nightmare. By a road figure who spoke with each of you to make a deal. To turn against the road you were taking toward helping the children of Kaiva, the Sun Children, and instead help the children of the three. One of you did not wake from that. Sir Morgan was escorted to the inn to rest, as Nightmare said that they wished to speak with them further. We'll begin today's episode inside the mind of Morgan. The first night each of you rested, coming out of the dungeon, each person was visited by a road figure, hairless from head to toe, replacing a portion of their memory, a nightmare whether it be reoccurring or not. For you, Sawmill Gain, you find yourself climbing out of a the edge of this canyon, the rocky ground giving way around you, but you manage to push your way out. You're soaking wet clothes, weighing you down, water filling your lungs. You cough out and fall upon your side. You remember this trial. You remember the pain you went through. You remember the footsteps of Sir Kittick. His smell. The sound of his mandibles that click is like a tick every few seconds. You remember him walking towards you. The first voice you heard after completing it. But it's not his smell that approaches you. It's not his footsteps. He's a lighter. Almost like a glow coming towards you. Bright. And you hear a voice. One is trying to invade your dreams. Your nightmares, Sir Morgane. It feels as if a darkness is looming in the sky above. This trial was done in the day, but it feels you, you have that feeling of nighttime. The sun forge that you're so aware of as its magic illuminates around you is not there. In this memory, for some reason, it's night. This light kneels beside you. You just see the kind of outline of this glowing figure. A 
I have not come to you before. Not so earnestly and humbly. But I have been with you for some time. There is one who wishes to enter your mind. One of nightmare. Of darkness. But the power I have given you allows me some control over whether to let it in. Do you know who I am? Do I? Not a voice familiar to you. So just shake your head. I am the one you swore an oath to. I am Justice. Well, that is the name I have been given. She'll drop to one knee and lower her head. There is no necessary reason to do that. I do not seek your servitude. I seek your mortal guile. The wisdom that comes with a fleeting life. One who would stand against darkness itself. These trials test so many. Barbaric as they might be, I have been waiting for one. Who might not be as obviously capable as the others but possesses a talent. And now I see your path is beginning. The darkness kind of looms a little closer and the radiant light pushes it back. What would you have me do? Make a choice. This creature wishes to infest your mind. You can let it. It will break down your nightmares. It will feed off of them. It will offer you things that the sun children cannot. Or keep allowing me to guide you. These nightmares I'm having, what are they? One of the children of the three is nightmare manifest itself. It does not fight fairly. It chooses certain mortals and will slowly make them fear their sleep. Send their mind to madness or servitude. Eventually, when every single night you lay your head down and know that it will be filled with pain, anguish, memories you wish to forget, Waking in a sweat and fear, when a voice reaches you and says to you, I can make it all go away if you just swear fealty. Most falter, most are changed, most become a part of its plans.
and it has chosen to do it to you. What's behind the door? What a persuasion check. Twenty-eight, not twenty. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> you may realize that there is power that emanates from the vault. It is mine. From a deal I made long ago. The oath that you swore, the chapter you are part of. I feed them as necessary. For justice is nothing without the many blades that bring it into order. I reside beneath the vault. But those who lead the chapter would not have you know this. For I am not kept as a Deity, or as a leader, but as the first prisoner. Regardless of that, they believe me incapable of choosing my own champions. Feeding just a little more to some others. What they drain from me is enough to keep me subdued. But to you, I give a little more. You know why? Why? You asked more questions than they did. You seek answers, whereas others seek orders. You're an imperfect knight. By the common design of one. But when the knights were first formed in this land, inspired by a time beyond before mortals, you were closer to the fit there. Seek enough answers, and you will find the truth. Truth and what I know have become blurred of late. And if you would be my light in that fog, I will be your sword. Then I shall guide you further. Eventually I will call upon you to help me. Then for now, some more gain. Rest knowing that the nightmares are kept at bay for as long as I can.
will stare up at the darkness looming. But I make no promises to how long that may be. The children of the three are strong. And the fact that they have returned troubles me. We will speak again. For now, rest. And the light seems to fade away and then move upward towards the sky. And it feels as if daytime has risen, dawn has overtaken it, and the darkness is held back. Your dream fades. to a rest of no disturbance. And when your eyes flicker and you wake, it is in the comfort of a bed inside an inn, many hours later. The rest of you, as Morgan is waking up, have already spoken to the mayor. You have walked outside and around you is a glade of trees and beautiful rivers that flow around towards a small waterfall, rocky in the distance. The glam glades, quicker than any other forest you've seen, have already changed to full autumn. Here, the trees have orange leaves that are ready to fall and grow and, uh, and collapse off. Some of the trees are starting to lose some of their leaves. Leaves kind of falling constantly as if the trees are growing them. They turn a brownish orange and then fall to the ground only to grow them again. Like it's a perpetual fall. You can smell the autumn flowers as they kind of allow the pollen to drift throughout the town of Sigenbrat. And you're slightly raised off the ground. So it brings its kind of lower section with it. And you out out to the streets. But to what purpose? Well, probably we should check on... Sir Morgaine, no, before we head back to Abigail. I also would like to stop by the courier quickly, see if there are any letters. That's a good idea. Right. <clears throat> Let's do that. Before heading yeah, off that we... way. Yeah. Sorry. No, you go. Uh, I was going to ask, would we have a concept of like, how long it would typically take to get a letter from where we were to where we... Yeah, it, it, it depends on... I can't remember if I said a specific time uh, then. It depends on uh, who you're sending to, where they're sending to. Um, uh, uh, typically, a bird can cover 50 miles in a day if they fly fast enough, some of the, the messenger birds, um, uh, with plenty of rest. Some of the time, uh, the birds can arrive at a major and then they can send a message quicker. Um, uh, mm. The spells like Animal Messenger help to go faster as well. Um, so, depending on the distance, uh, anywhere from a, for a day or so up to like a week. Um, uh, I, I think mine were three and four days, if that yeah. helps. Because your one was a couple of regions away. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes they'll send different messenger birds back and different messengers. Um, so at the, this point, it would be worth checking. Yeah. We, we would both believe it was worth checking. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's likely that you would have a letter in by now, at least. Um, for you, Morgane, you've woken up in the bed. Um, yeah. You don't see, but you can smell it's different. You're in a different area. It's a lot more... Um, there's a lot more pollen in the air. You can kind of smell... Uh, the difference in the forestry you are. You're further northeast. It's a little warmer up here um, during this time. Um, I believe they put you in a comfortable room. So uh, more comfortable than a few of the ones you've been laying in. Um, 
What do you do? Um, is my like I, I'm assuming I'm still in armor. Yeah, I don't think anyone necessarily undressed. Uh, uh, mm. I think you were. Yeah, I you... would have no idea how to do that. I don't know. I was, it's a buckle. I was just wondering that, like, if any of us would even <laughs> woke up yeah. fully armored in a bed. Yeah, well, it's, it's comfy I mean, for her. <laughs> yeah, I guess like would Carlisle. Carlisle might have taken the time well, to. Well, if you didn't, I guess if you didn't that. know what was wrong, you wouldn't fuck with it. Yeah. Yeah, you could have definitely made it more comfortable in terms of like padding around certain areas, be like, oh, you know, to try and avoid I think we any like, chafing or anything. Like the pillows and stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, and been like, all right. But essentially, yeah, now. you would have woken up in your armor, kind of uh, maybe small pieces of it removed, just the the, mm. the obvious parts. Laid but... out like Snow White on the thing yeah. <laughs> in the forest. <laughs> yeah, she would like uh, kind of navigate the room slowly. Um, she'd see her sword leaning on the wall with its with its glow um maybe find a wash basin wash wash her face yeah we'd come in this room um and then yeah pick up the sword holster it and uh figure out where she is leave the room head downstairs yeah you can um uh head downstairs find out you're in the inn that uh that previously you'd rested in um you can smell the kind of citrusy flavor of the water nearby uh as, i forgot the water <laughs> uh you would this is so fancy yeah it's a, it's a it's quite a nice inn um you you'd work out where you are the doors are open um as they're kind of letting in the the, the breeze from the new area um probably just outside you guys would be walking past at this time to kind of reconvene the group. You mm. would see the doors of the inn open and, and Morgane in the lobby. I mean, just head down, fully armored still. Maybe a little bit kind of disgruntled where the armor's kind of pushed against her. But awake for the first time of the day. Oh, that's quite lucky. Points. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd go in then. If we were like walking by anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> we just we just walk by. We we're like, just keep walking. She's fine. <laughs> mm. She looks fine. <laughs> yeah, uh would go in Morgane. Are you all oh, right? There you are. You are yes, quite I, asleep. I'm not quite sure what happened, but I assume I have you all to thank for my safety. Well. Are you you're not any worse for wear, you're all right. Well, I slept for the first time in a few days, so oh. more than all right. Oh, good. Why did something happen? Um, we were all visited by a nightmare, and it implied that it was going to be speaking to you as well, but for much longer than the rest of us. I see. Well, but if you slept well, say, we did not speak. Interesting. At all. That is interesting. Hmm, well, good. You'd see people walking, uh, all the guards, the Sparts, are kind of walking around, um, preparing kind of moving anything that they need to be moved back into place. You can see there's a lot of things that get kind of strapped down during the teleportation, and they start to unravel those. Um, the town starts to come alive. You see as the shops start to open up, because um, it was early morning. And uh, and they're kind of preparing themselves for any entourage that might arrive here at, uh, at the Glam Glades, uh, anyone that might be expecting their visit. Um, you can see kind of the morning routine of the spots just moving and putting supplies in each of the buildings and then kind of shipping food between them. Um, but yeah, the town is your oyster, wherever you want to go. Um, we were... I'm sorry. Oh, <clears throat> I was going to say above board, I think probably if we like all started walking together, we'd just, as we were walking, sort of tell Morgane everything that's happened while she's been asleep. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
yeah, you can you can explain everything that happened with the orb. Um, uh, just a reminder for you, Sam, because you actually weren't here. The uh, what they can tell you is that the orb was identified by Desmond, um, mm -hmm. and is organic. Um, however, when you look at it, or when you're in the kind of area of it, it glows in the same way an enchanted item does. That whitish mm. glow. Okay. Where did we? Uh, sorry. Where did we wind up going? Has has That's have we dog, moved yet? Yeah. yeah, we're in all weather, so on. we're like. Okay. Where is that on the world map? Yeah. So that for you guys. Uh, yeah. Oh. oh. Is there anywhere specific in All Weathers? So this well, we is uh, Glam Glades. You're right, right in the kind of northeastern place. portion of the, the Glam Gates around this. Uh, okay. Because you're by a river, it would be about here. Mountains in the distance, river flowing, waterfall, uh, beautiful water all around. Awesome. And we're trying to go, we were going to go to this one. <laughs> we got a little ways to hike. Yes, yeah. It's quite a, quite um, a distance. <clears throat> Yeah, so I think we would tell Morgane that, and then um, see that we were headed to the courier, and then back to Sister Abigail, and that um, the girl was awake and had no memory so far. Okay. Um, I'll put you onto the general town map so you can see all of the buildings and whatnot. Ooh. But uh, yeah. Uh, You'd be able to go down Gosh. to uh, to find out if your letters have been retrieved or not. Um, just get the map on my end. It's not showing up. I'm just going to refresh my world. 21 second. Uh, but you'd be heading down towards uh, to go and get your letters to see if uh, anything you've sent off has been has been returned. Um, Okay, come on, roll 20. There you go. Uh, all right, there you go. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, you head down towards uh, Garson Holtz, um, which is where the goblin was originally, which you can speak to uh, about kind of sending information out and whatnot. Um, you'd head inside to the small shop uh where they've got all different furniture pieces it's kind of modeled again like a, a kind of wood workshop and they sell kind of different bits of furniture um and ha having just seen uh holtz uh giving out information uh he's now just kind of entered back in and you see him he's kind of putting some things down getting things ready to open up the shop for the day um gas in the back rooms lifting and moving things back and forth uh you see him turn around and go ah oh. All right, guys. So, uh, you got all the information you needed then? The goblin well, just kind of almost. like pulls out a pipe, fills it up, begins to smoke from it. We were just hoping to see um, if perhaps we had received any letters while we were out and about. Uh, I got two back. <laughs> oh. He walks over to the what? side and uh, over to the desk, leans around the side, pulls back. Through about six or so, flicks through, pulls out your two, and then puts uh, two of these envelopes onto the side. Um, one of them is marked with the stamp of uh, of the North, uh, in particular where you come from, Carlisle. It's a kind of the symbol of kind of almost an eye, and then a shield around it, um, almost this kind of Dusk Watchers symbol. Um, the eye actually blinks on top of the 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 envelope. This kind of ink, uh, like a oh. stamp um, uh, wax that Creepy. is able to animate. Um, your one, uh, which is just labelled for Andrasa, is just a kind of standard letter, a little bit kind of dusty and smoky uh, parchment paper that's going to be written down on. Um, it's got a bit of sand on it, and they've been kind of encrusted into the actual envelope, and it's kind of caused it to go a little bit brown. Um, but uh, yeah, you have two letters in response. Uh, well, I was expecting uh, this one to take a little bit longer to get back. Maybe you had a, a fast bird or something. Well, yeah, because <sighs> it flew north. We sent our faster one. Oh. Well, feel free to take them, and I'll send the letters to both of you guys now. Uh, All right. Takes a letter. 
I will yeah, put I'll take one. it into your inventory. Mm -mm -mm. This is your one addresser. Uh, you should see it right at the top. And then yep. Carlisle. It is your one. Uh, yeah, it's not loading, so let's see. Holtz just looks to your group as he hands the kind of letters over to you. She chose all weathers, eh? Not too bad the trade up here. What exactly are you lot? What do you what mean? mean? You just do bounties, is that it? What? If you're looking to earn a bit of money, I think I could probably put you in line with some work. You know, looks what? towards Morgan. As long as that one doesn't go after any of them. No What's, promises. What sort of work are you talking about? Well, I have friends who need favors done. They don't have much in the way of, uh... Well, it's maybe outside the territories of the given law of the land. It might be escorting. Maybe, you know, a bit of bodyguard work. Roughing some people up, finding some people, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, vague kind of crime-adjacent um, jobs and the like. Sure. But it's nothing too bad. Just, you know, capable folk looking for uh, capable folk. That's all. Right. Hey, I'm trying to avoid getting into a uh, crime. To be also, um, since here my my mm. letter here might come with a package. Is that back there? Oh, yeah. He walks over uh, around the corner, um, and he gathers your. He comes around uh, the corner, um, and he gets an, an, an little attached note. Um, hands it across to you on this kind of small little bag, um. Or it'd be probably two little bags uh, that have been attached together. Um, the note reads, Not all of those who can help will, and not all of those who will help can. I take comfort in knowing you will always try regardless of whether you can. Oh. It contains 230 gold pieces. A stone of revivify, which can be crushed to res someone in the last minute. Oh. And a cloak. Okay. And 240 gold? 230. 230. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, don't mention it. Well, how much would it pay? I'll just ask. Depends on the client. But, you know, mm. I could put you in touch with some people. My brother had a lot of contacts. Oh. And Trasa just says quietly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, mm. like, would it be in this area where we are right now? Or would we have to travel about? It depends. You know, on... Can we do it on the way of other things? Uh, maybe some of if them. I have to speak efficient. to people first. I just... For me, it's more about just finding the right people and pushing them in the right direction. If you just give me some interest, maybe I can send you on your way to, you know, I have, I have gasped, reach out to you when I hear a few things, that's all. It's just whether you all want right, to be in the pipeline. <clears throat> How about this? We are going to be leaving shortly and we'll be headed towards the Bay of Progress. So maybe you have something that will be on our way. And then we can make a determination then. I have a couple of contacts in the bear progress I could get in touch with. Uh, Fantastic. And let them know. Again, I want no involvement in myself. I also don't deal in the kind of matters of the unlawful type. Sure. Just uh, helping some kind of folk along the way. That's all. And if you need any information on anything... You know where to find me. Excellent. Thank you, dear. Of course. And if you do run into my brother, 
to Morgaine. Go lie on him. Oh, I will. <laughs> what a deception check. <laughs> 19. <laughs> I'm going to roll an uh, insight against it. Stairs right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well, what are the odds? What are the odds of you also rolling that? <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, anything you need to know about where we are now? Anything you need to know about what to watch out for? Laws of the land. Anything. Hmm. Not yet. Oh, is there anything that could kill us outside? <laughs> and the glam glades, yeah. Oh, great. Joe, would I know anything about... Because I was literally at Crown Heart Hall for years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it is not terribly far away. Um, roll a history check. I believe in you. Thanks, bud. Thanks. <laughs> I'll give you advantage. Because obviously you've lived in the area. Okay. Yeah, let's go. 16. 16. Um, so the Glam Glades is uh, a fey forest. Uh, it is known for the fact that it... Long ago, the fey wilds were kind of almost... Attempted to be regrown here. But it failed. Um, similar to in Vale Reef when they grew the Great Wood. Um, and a couple other woods out there. A seedling was brought out here to try and grow its own kind of forestry here. And the Glam Glades was formed. Um, instead of great trees that reached the skies, it became uh, a beautiful, dense forestry where the trees were all somewhat alive and spoke to one another. Um, but in modern history, the Glam Glades is known almost as kind of a neutral ground. It, politically, it's an awkward location. Uh, it is ran by a series of uh, Aladrin who uh, are kind of the seasonal elves. So they're kind of almost the, the, the origin of the elves um, from the Feywild. And politically, it's seen as almost this neutral ground where the same laws that apply outside don't necessarily apply in there. They're meant to, but it takes a while for things to happen. You could seek ref refuge here. Uh, many elves used to seek refuge here if they ever had um, uh, grievances with the land. Um, but it has a kind of a history from... Dating back to the, the time of the Prelux gods and when the Luxian religion was pushing across the land and conquering, uh, the Glam Glades was one of those kind of holdout areas. Uh, so in kind of the modern day that you would have heard about, it, it, the people of Crown Hall would probably talk about it with some disdain because they don't like the fact that it kind of sits above or kind of adjacent to the law a lot of the time. Um, mm. But it's it's known for having these kind of unique festivals um, and and changes with the seasons uh, immediately with the seasons uh it becomes autumn within the first day of autumn's change um so it's kind of yeah it's kind of like a safety net inside all weathers to, to escape necessarily the law um would i know the answer to desmond's question on whether or not there was stuff in there that was like mm. particularly aggressive <laughs> give me a nature check on that one okay come on baby Uh, just normal? Yes, please. 17. 17. Um, you would know that the Feywild has the ability to cause some beasts to become a lot bigger, a lot stronger. Um, feeding off of Fey food or other creatures there can alter beings. Um, uh, creatures here are magical in nature. Um, and you probably know of some elements of the festivals coming with a little bit more danger um, uh, from some grievances that people of Crown Art Hall have had where some larger monsters have kind of escaped the area. Um, suddenly deer that are the size of an elephant, um, but with like antlers that are kind of almost curling down and spiked all the way, running into their territory, causing uh, mayhem and mischief. It is... Usually around the festival times that there are uh, creatures that come from the Glam Gates, which are 
relatively uh, dangerous, but you probably wouldn't know specific ones with a 17. Okay. We'll be fine, Desmond. I mean, look at it this way. You could just <clears throat> fall going over the threshold and break your neck or something and die then, so it's not going to be I more dangerous than that. Neck, well, you but, wouldn't, you but... Know. Right. We'll be fine. I could take care of it. Alright. Well, if you want any information, I'm here. I don't think we'll be moving for a little while. So, uh, you know, Sigmund grounded for now. And if you'd like to buy any furniture, of course, go help with that too. I'm you afraid we have no any... need for it. Do you want to buy any furniture? Me? Yes. It's just I've got this clock. The clock that she found <laughs> in the <laughs> bubble that she's just been carrying around. Uh. I don't know what I'm going to do with the clock as no. I'm traveling. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> uh, hold on, sorry. And my sheet all the way in the back. It's a grand total of seven. Yeah, no, I, I'll be honest with you. Most of the people come in here don't buy furniture. No, I know you said that. It was just sort of a long shot. Do you know where I can sell this? I don't want to get, just carry it around. Uh, try a town. Try an actual town. Well, I mean, I could have <laughs> well, figured that one out. That's not that town. helpful, is it? I'm just saying, no, that was helpful. Because otherwise, I've just saved you a trip walking mm. around this town to find a merchant that might buy a shitty little clock. I'm going to walk around it anyway. It's not really that. All right. Anyway, okay, go around to each store, ask them if they want to buy a clock. No, I definitely am not going to do that. Oh, why are you not going to do that? Because I don't want to talk to that many people. All right. Here. Well, uh, we but we should probably get uh get on going then. That's a good idea. Huh? Right, yeah. All right. Thanks for stopping by, Garson Holtz. And he, uh, he turns to continue, like, helping Hulk kind of lift some of the furniture and then put it back onto its displays. Don't worry, someone will, someone will buy that clock uh, one day. I mean, if they don't, that's fine. I'll just leave it somewhere. It's just it'd be more efficient to get some gold for it. I don't... It's fine. You'll find someone. Or, again, we won't, right? <sighs> All right, so we go see Sister Abigail. Mm. How quickly are we looking to start going after this vault? I think that's what we're about to determine, right, dear? Hmm. All right. Okay. Um, if you're heading back through the town, you can go right back towards the uh, longer than the road, the place where people can make their own rooms and, and hide away. Um, and you'd be able to go all the way through towards Sister Abigail's, uh, uh room, uh, where her and, and the lady left, uh, are awake. As we, um, as we walk and Russell will read her letter. Okay. Uh, she just sort of makes a little bit of a face, um, and, uh, rolls her eyes a little bit. And, uh, we carry on. Shakes the sand out. <laughs> yeah. You can see there's a little bit of pocket of it at the, in, on the inside of the letter as well, in the envelope. Um, you'd see, kind of once you arrive at Abigail, she, she Sister Abigail opens up the door. Um, having only left her like 30 minutes, an hour ago or so, it's a couple hours ago by now. Um, she's still kind of still talking to, to uh, the lady in the room. Um, folds her arm behind their back, kind of nods her head to Sam again. Didn't see you up and about last time. Yes, I was, uh, sleeping. Hmm. Well, I see that we've moved. Where did we go? Hmm. Glam glades. In all weathers? Yes. Hmm. Right. 
so. Okay, nods, but has no idea where this is. <laughs> it's fair. We're back near where we were when all of this began. I don't know if that will help her jogging her memory or... Well... Or if this is a dangerous place to be for her, both are potential. Mm. Servants... The skin, this one. We have agents all around. Indeed. Perhaps it's time we speak. I want to know what your involvement in all of this will be. Likewise. And I will tell you as well. It's comfortable. <laughs> all right. Sits down. <clears throat> all right, who's going first? She folds her arms. Well, to start off, I'll tell you this. I know a little more about this than I've let on. Obviously, that is clear to you. We had guessed that. The sisters in my home were traveling around. What was the name you picked again, dear? And she looks up. Spring, I think. Represents new growth. The sisters around Spring would have had her remain there. The hope is that she would regain some of her ability to do vast magic. I would not have them have that. In truth, she needs to be kept away. I cannot tell you what her identity is, but I can tell you this. Her blood is celestial. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to tell you everything yet, but I know, and to understand who all of you are first. You've all got involved in this together. You've all fought, discovered, and stood alongside each other, teleported all the way up here. I assume some of you are to leave, to return back to Crown Heart Hall, rekindle with those you left. And forget this happened. That's not an option for me. Nor me. I'm not even from Crown Heart Hall. I didn't really love it. No offense. Yeah, looks at Jack. <laughs> None taken. She looks towards Desmond, Carl, Arnvey. You three. I've no place to call home anymore. Just waits for Carla and Desmond. Oh, sorry, I uh, I had to step away for a second. Oh, that's I okay. Back down. Uh, My bad. That's all right. Uh, she's she's asked you. Uh, if you were to leave, now that you're closer to Crown Art Hall. Well, um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this group here needs me, and, uh, seems like apocalypse, possibly, and all that inbound 
It seems like you might need my help a little bit more than anyone up there at the moment. Oh, oh Shane, you're muted. It finally happened to me. <laughs> well done. I feel we got some uh, big responsibilities now. And Carlisle's right. I'm taking on the weight of High Loma on your shoulders. And I'll help you along the way as much as I can. She came to me over a century ago. Not specifically me, but the house. To escape. At first, it was... Simple. Um, I was just tending to her needs as I would any other. But she... capable of things I, I couldn't believe. Small magic at first, and I've been magic, around magic my whole life. And I'm, as you might have also guessed, quite capable of it myself. But she was able to craft, create, do things I couldn't possibly imagine. With magic that I'd never seen before. We became friends. Very close friends. And eventually more. But no words put to it. Simply, we enjoyed and reveled in the discovery of a new person. And she opened up to me about why she'd come, but not in detail. She would never tell me much detail. Did not even know her name. And she merely called me sister. We tried not to put names to things, but she did name one thing. This skinless one. This one that hunted her. I not understand why. What purpose would they have with her? Is it because she's a sorceress? Is it, uh, she's gifted? Did she do something? And as the time went on, it, it, I began asking questions myself. But we remained silhouettes to one another. Speaking as strangers. Masking it as something else, but I began to search into this skinless god and I didn't find much. Rituals and the like, and any information I could get from anyone traveling. Sigambrot was a new town at the time, and I would send messages back and forth through them, but we didn't. It was as if this didn't really exist, but then. Then they did. A group of them came through close to the house. I learned of their location and I went there. And I demanded from them. I needed to know who was hunting her. And I did not get the information with their compliance, but I got the information. They served a pre lux god, one of immense power. One who believed they could bring the darkness back to this land. 
with the right sacrifice. That sacrifice being her. I killed them before they could do anything else. I returned to her and I told her what I learned. She was furious at the time. And then, that night we decided to, we were going to go off together, flee together. I'd protect her on the road and she could handle herself. So we'd let the illusion drop at last. For both of us. But something changed when she saw me. And I don't know why. But she... We... I went to pack my things and I returned to her room and she was gone. And then years went by, and I wander in a woodland, and I find you all with her lying there. I can't tell you what she is, but I have a theory. Mm-hmm. What do you know of the embryo in the capital? What do we know? What do we know? <laughs> what, now? what can we roll? <laughs> <laughs> Go what ahead now? and roll a... Give me a religion check, everyone. <sighs> Sixteen. Can Eighteen. Christina help me? Uh, no. Just because it's recording no, information. No, I'm gonna ask. That's fine. I'm just um, gonna ask. So ignore the plus. Sixteen. Seven. Seven. For those who rolled fifteen above, you would know, because no one rolled over twenty, you would know that And some of you lived through this, uh, or at least, uh, at least in Drassa. 111 years ago was an event called the Great Light. A flash of light appeared from the capital, where the fog blocks the original sun well. And it flashed across the entirety of the land. Almost like a flashbang that could be seen for a moment. Many people were blinded in the capital. Um, and at the time, when that appeared, an embryo formed above the sun well, inside the capital city. A sack of light almost just forming with a child on the inside, a tiny, tiny embryo that was growing. And for the last 111 years, it's been growing ever since, this divine light. And that's all I'm going to tell you with the, the, the under the 20 about that. But you'd know that at least anyone that follows the Luxian religion that they're seeing this as almost the, the, the coming of a, of, a, of a prophet, almost the coming of a, um, mm. a new deity, the rebirth. Question. Yeah. When we were in the vault looking at the device and everything lighting up through time and whatever, did we see anything around that time 111 years ago that corresponded to that? Like, was there. Uh, I'm going to say no, specifically um, because you're doing it all quite fast and because you're flipping yeah. through to look forward to, to the end to look for any really major ones. Yeah, Probably yeah, not yeah. necessarily, no. Okay. Um, 
Especially because this is probably during the time of darkness where, where in terms of uh, people not communicating as much between the vaults. Sure. Um, you'd also know this, for everyone would, would, would know this at least, um, a back to Luxing religion. The, the great light um, uh, that was reached out to everyone shortly afterwards, that's when the eighth day of the week was made. Um, and the eighth day of the week is to, for those who are not in the know necessarily, might think it's um, uh, a, a means of just the Luxing religion trying to make up for time. But it was, as a for those who do know, it's a kind of a, an honorary to the, to the embryo, to the growing child. Um, she would fill in the gaps of that and say, It was that same year. Not long apart. That she appeared at our door. And she could do wondrous, terrible things with this magic. She could create light from nothing that could span miles. I don't know what she is, but I know that she must have done something. She must be involved in it. I just can't work out how. Hmm. What does Spring look like during all of this? Like, mm -hmm. does she look like she's paying attention and this is all like news to her? Does she look... Yeah, she looks kind of frightened. Um, it's almost like a, a quite like a childlike expression because she's trying to take in all the information, but it's, it's so foreign to her. It's so kind of like overwhelming um but not to a point where she's 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 kind of fearful but just kind of trying to follow along as much as possible okay. um can uh, i was just gonna ask if you could give us a brief um refresher on both of their physical descriptions because when you were talking about how they let the illusion drop and then that changed something for spring. I'm wondering if she like recognized something about Abigail, and I'm trying to remember what Abigail, yeah, the distinguishing features. I'll get my um, I'll get my actual. Abigail's a drow, correct? Drow, yeah. So quite pale. Mm, um, she's kind of pale. Scar. Yeah, face, I have it on like my page one of notes, but I figured yeah. maybe we could all use a refresher. Um, mm. so uh, the way I described it at the beginning, I'm gonna get the original description. Um. Drow woman, woman wearing all black with a robe that covers her head up, exposing only her face. Um, one is a shawl that covers all but her mouth and chin. Um, the part of her eyes looks as if she was very slightly meshed over. Um, not enough to make out her eye color at the time. Uh, soft blue he uh, uh, hue of hair. Darker than her, her skin, which is kind of like a palish white. Uh, Whitish blue. Um, her cheeks look a little uh, slightly worn and wrinkled from smiling so much. A very subtle scar on her lower mouth. Um... And since she's kind of removed uh, uh, kind of visage, quite sh uh, uh, tall cheekbones and quite uh, shaped cheekbones with uh, these almost kind of very soft, yellowy, golden eyes. Um, can you also remind us what... Um, sorry. what Chaos was a tiefling, right? Yes. And then... Well, the cultists were all just kind of random, just random folks of all sorts, um, or were yeah. they? No specific okay. species uh, necessarily sure. connection. Okay. So, hmm. I looked to protect her. Until her memory returns, I just ask her why. I don't even right. know if it's responsible for me to even be here if she doesn't want to see me. I I think I'll kind of reach out towards Spring and maybe like pat her arm a little bit and be like, well, she obviously needs someone to watch out for her right now. 
and you not only fit the bill, but it seems like she does like you in this moment, so... This is probably exactly where you should be. Hmm. Well... What is your role in it all? You know a lot. That's what I was about to ask you. You go first. <sighs> well, we're all wrapped up in this now. We've all made it clear we have no intention of moving on. What is it that you're hoping we'll do exactly? I don't know. I have no necessary path lined out for you, but back then I was limited by sending messages to find out more information. I was limited by small amounts of contacts and only wanted to say a little at a time. Keep my ear to the ground, but extremely grounded. Now, we can look into it a little bit more thoroughly. I want to find out who this skinless god is. Yes, you are. I. I Quite a bit more, actually. I want to find out who Spring was. Is. And part of me is... Sees this as a little bit of a redemption. It gives me a chance to do something better for the world. But I know why I'm doing it. And I realize that you're all wrapped up in it, but... Why do you think Tai Loma is your responsibility? Why do you think you're capable enough? Hmm. Well, I certainly hope we aren't going to do all of this on our own. But there is a certain responsibility that comes from knowledge. Even if any of us were to walk away from this, We'd know what we walked away from. I think that, um... Competence breeds confidence, dear. And I'm very competent. Therefore, I think that I can do something about all of this. Mm. This is the, um... I'm not quite so good at this, so forgive me. Is this the part of the slumber party where we sort of all say something about our own selves, right? <laughs> like you gave a truth and now the rest of us need to sort of introduce ourselves as well. <clears throat> what is... It was a bit different in boarding school, but I think that's the general idea. What is a slumber idea. party? I do not know this phrase. It's when you have a group of friends or sometimes people who can barely tolerate each other and they get all of their blankets and their pillows. They put them all in one room and they sleep all in the same room. And sometimes there are games that are fun. Sometimes there are games that are quite cruel and pick on one person, um, but generally there is a lot of back and forth sort of conversation. Mm. And so I think that's what Cystic Abigail was just sort of doing there. And now it's our turn. Am I right? Looks at Sister Abigail. More or less. I suppose I, uh, I am intrigued as to who each of you are. I mean, as far as I was aware, you all appeared from Crown Art Hall in the company of 
nobles, delegates, and politicians. So, and we each go around, say a little about ourselves. Well, uh, hi everyone, I'm Carlisle Davenport, <laughs> I am a doctor, I uh, would uh, travel on up around the uh, Lands Without Light, helping folk out. Did you, how did you become a doctor? Oh, that's a, that's a long and boring story that, uh... You tell Carlisle's a little bit, like, uncomfortable to even really get into <laughs> this. It's like, the, you know, listen. All right. Fact of the matter is, I had a pretty good teacher. And, uh, you're all safe and sound as long as I've got, you know, supplies on hand. And as far as any kind of long trips to any vaults and the such, sometimes you can't count on magic. And Drassa looks visibly uncomfortable with that. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, Carlisle, I don't think you need to be convincing us that we can rely on you. Hmm. Were you born in the land in the north? Oh, uh, no, I was, um, I was born up in, uh, What's the name of the place? Sorry, it's Horizons easier for me to remember when I have the full map. Horizons okay, Rest. Yeah, map. I was born up in uh, Horizons Rest by uh, Seeker's Luck. Really? Yeah, I uh, actually grew Have up I in Seeker's Luck. You're joking. Uh, no, I, I would have um, no reason to joke about where I was born. That's true. That's also <laughs> not the face that you make when you joke, I guess. Interesting. Well, um, then we were... Well, we were almost neighbors, in a way. Huh. Oh, well, uh, well isn't that, that something? Uh, that is something. I grew up in um, Azrain's Gambit. Well, of course I did, because my grandfather is Azrain. So, oh. it's named for him. <laughs> is that uh, right? House of Atlas. yes. Huh. Yeah, small who, world. Who is? Would I know? <laughs> I don't think I would know. No. Yeah. A southern politics. Who is Azarain? Well, well, V, uh, does Carlisle know? Uh, give me a history check. All right, this is uh, give me a fun history. <laughs> uh. Well, the, I only vaguely recognize that name because it is the name of a place. And that that genuinely can be fair. Like uh, with an eleven, um, you could recognize it with someone that they were a an elf or elven kind. Um, and a lot of places are named after people. Uh, it might not necessarily be something that you would. It's it's before your lifetime, um, so it's not necessarily something you might have been interested in. You know, uh, uh, it's it's. Probably with that role, yeah, you know it was an elf, and you know it was kind of someone in the past who was seen as kind of a hero of Horizon's Rest, but not much more than that. Yes, well, um, my grandfather, Azrain, is the reason that um, House of Alice is even a house at this point. Lesser to be sure, though, of course, if my parents have anything to say about that, it won't be long. Until they rise. Um, do you know much about the war of, well, several wars, right? War of a Hundred Blessings is when he lost my uncles. At any rate, do you know much about the war um, against the last king? Is she looking at me? Yeah. V looks like deer in the headlights, like... Right, sh there was a king. Should I? No? No, not necessarily. There was a king. And I just forgot his name. Looks at DM. Oh, uh, <laughs> the king prior? God, no. Yeah. I'm my own one. Uh, ba 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 ba. 
Uh, the last one, right? Because yes. it was that war. Yeah. Can't remember his name. One sec. I just gotta look for my find my little notes. Um. Continue as if you said it for a second. I'll find right. it because I've, I've actually. You know, it. King. What's his face? Um. And, <laughs> right. Remember that. We know and in them. the very last, um, <laughs> in the last war, the Strifelands had kind of turned against the king because he was a right twat, and um, Azrain got involved and rescued Charles Rix's daughter. Um, and so he was quite the hero of the time. That is what turned the tide um, and let the Strifelands fight the king. And that is, of course, what ended up, like I said, turning the tide and making the king no more. And that is when all the houses founded, etc. So it's quite old. He's about, let's see right now, what is it, 499. So he's about 950 at this point. I don't think he even knows how old he was. So um, he's around for the time of stars and used to tell me stories about that all the time when I was a child. Um, but yes, so he gained some notoriety and fame. Um, my parents are trying to capitalize on that and I left <laughs> as soon as I could. Mm. If we me to find the name, I'm trying to find my document. No. So. I was looking for something. <laughs> yeah, no. No, 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 that's okay. It's going to take me a minute because it's all in my... Uh, I've got to find the name of this document where I've got all of the names of things. I haven't been there in about... Um, well, about 50 blessings, I'd say. I had gone to Mist Haven. Well, wait. Carlisle... You would know this. So, Horizon's Rest, there was this thing that happened um, called the Drought. Yeah, and the uh, the Drought. The Drought, right. And Horizon's Rest was affected by it. There was suddenly no magic at all. And... I had the absolute misfortune to be born on Horizon Thrust during the drought. Um, and at any rate, I left and I went to Mist Haven. Um, I was accepted, even though, of course, at that point, I couldn't prove that I could do any magic at all. How did you know you could? Confidence, dear. I had a really strong feeling that I could do it. All I heard were stories of the time of stars, floating cities, and, you know, magic beyond anything that we're capable of now. Shifting the whole... It, it was absolutely wondrous, and I thought, you know... I'm going to learn how to do that, and I'm going to make damn sure that I can always do it. There won't be something like a drought to take it away. Um, and so I would like to think that I got into Miss Taven um, because they saw something in me, but... I don't know, maybe it was because they knew that House of Alice was on the rise and they thought they could get favor or something. I don't really know. Um, but it worked out. Uh, it worked out for a few years until I left the Academy. Can I until then. Were you, did you, did you leave or were you forced to leave? Oh, I left. They gave me a choice. Cowards. <laughs> they said, well, Indrasa, 
you can leave, you can go home, and just say that you weren't cut out for it. Go home, have a nice little life. Or we can discharge you, expel you. It's your choice. It doesn't sound like they knew you very well. They're very... Imid. You know, I thought an academy... I chose Miss Haven because it's the best library. Jas still thinks it's them. They're absolutely wrong. But... They don't do anything. Any of the knowledge that they have. They don't do anything with it. They just sit and think. And talk and think some more. And talk some more. There's whole sections of the library that you can't even walk into. Well, you can, and I did, but you're not supposed to. And apparently I wandered too far in and they did not like that. But again, as I said, cowards. I will say the silver lining in all this is that, given what happened in Crown Heart Hall, I've been proved 100% right, and they have been proved 100% wrong. That's something, isn't it? <laughs> King Erendus. E R E N D U S. King Erendus the Devastator was his nickname. Or title given to him by the populace. But <laughs> he loved that. <laughs> On the what? <laughs> So, that takes us to my fairly recent history. After that, I left. I went home. My parents couldn't stand the scandal of having a daughter kicked out of an academy. And so I left. And I went to the Gap. And I met Lord Marin. I've been there for 50 blessings, give or take. I was in Crown Heart Hall as part of my duties for House Tien. Um, of course, the gap is right next to the Ruby Stretch, and we all know what's going on there. Um, my current duties right now are to travel around and drum up support for the uh battle efforts in the ruby stretch so um mm. asking for you know arms uh men women etc to help in the efforts to keep the stretch contained Well, so we have a mage, a medic. What else are you capable of? You said <clears throat> you don't have a home. She looks towards UV. <clears throat> An orphan? No. I'm... I was <clears throat> from the land without light. Born there. Mm. Oh. Surprised to see one come so far south. Most of those who live up there never leave. Or it's, it... are killed for doing so. It is my first time leaving, and not by much choice of my own, but... I am of little importance beyond being a weapon. I can provide that to you and your cause 
my destiny is to prove myself. So, if this journey takes me to places that grant that, I am interested. I do know what it Who is like to you? lose a home. Sorry. No, who told you you of little importance? Why would you think that? I... I do not... do not know. I suppose... I assumed outsiders may view me that way. Well, it definitely wasn't something anything anyone said around here, so... Hmm. Everything and everyone is important to me. You are important. Mm. Whether you know it or not. You lost your home too, Abigail. At least in a same sense. I ran from it. Mm. I joined the House of Silhouettes after the Night of Widows 200 years ago. Ah. Uh, for those who don't know about that, after a devastating war, one that should never have happened, many of us who had lost someone decided to blame those who had caused the war, the noblemen and women who had funded it, And most of us that performed on that night our duties to our late partners, we, uh, well, those who did not escape died. Those who did escape usually were hunted down. I found comfort in the sisterhood and solitude. You'll find home, too. Perhaps. So we have a capable fighter from the north. A mage. A medic. What are you three capable of? What brought are you out here? Uh, Tack looks at the other two like, <laughs> please go before me. <laughs> want to, do you want to draw straws? Would it be easier? I'm a knight of House Kaelin. I was there because we were tasked with locating a dangerous criminal. The same criminal, as it would have it, that caused all this mess. Your path makes the most sense then. Did you... Have you always been a knight of the Dreadvolt, Sir Morgane? Hmm. Since I was seven, I believe. Who? You turned them very young. Hmm. Yes, they do. Hmm. Those who survive, anyway. Did you want to become a knight? It was far better than the alternative. Let me mm. put it that way. I suppose if you're young enough, thrown into that situation, it's hard to say you were given a choice. Not to speak for you. No, by all means. 
Do you, do you resent the lack of choice? Oh, I had a choice. We all did. That's why there's no noble children who become knights. If they do, they stay in the upper houses. Becoming a knight is always a better choice for most of us. But if you could be anything... I'd be this. Mm. I found what my calling. Be? be what would you be if you could be anything? I have never thought of this. I do not know. I may think on it more. Hmm. A knight added to the mix. I am. Um... I was raised in Songrest to be a resident changeling. I was essentially raised to be a blank slate to take on the personalities and forms of any of the house family or major figures in case of an emergency. And five years ago, there was an emergency in Songrest. Did you have a choice? That's a lot to take in. <clears throat> I told the others this a while ago, but um, perhaps you've heard of a Princess Zonia that is currently missing. That was me. Or rather, I took on her form for five years in Crown Heart Hall. Where's the original one? I don't know. I'm not allowed to know. I grew up with her, with both of them, Warren as well. <clears throat> it, is, is this a common practice? It can be. It's for safety. Um, not just for them, but also for us. My parent um, knew the late lord of the house and asked for shelter for the both of us when I was very young. And so I was raised out there to take on that role. <clears throat> what if you could do anything, Jack? What would you do? I was raised to observe people, to appreciate the little things that they do, the, the small gestures that make them who they are. And I think there's so much beauty in that. For a, a small period of time, I was able to song rest, um, has a, a large mining trade. And I was taught a bit of jeweling. I was taught to sew sort of creative pursuits that helped me create the same sort of beauty that I see. I enjoy that. If I had a choice, I would have kept doing that, I think. <clears throat> would you have had to stay Zonia or ever? Gotten married as Zonia. That's what was expected of me. 
had children, Azonia. I wouldn't have been able to. That would have been an issue. Not on my end, of course. But I don't think I could have done it much longer. It, at first, I was given correspondence. Obviously, they knew where I was. They knew what I was doing. And they considered it um, a part of the war effort, so to speak. And so I was... War um, effort. Crown Heart Hall really likes to spin it as though um, something very different happened in Songrest, but in fact, they were attempting to take over. It was they who attacked. Oh. And so I presented myself as Zonia, offered myself as something to take with them. And they took the bait. But I don't... I don't know how long it would have gone on for. They stopped communicating with me. They stopped telling me anything. And at a certain point, you just start to wonder if it's even worth it to keep going. Not... What your duty is anymore. But I can't go back there. I, especially to the lady of the house, it will. Of some rest, you mean? Yes. She's never liked me. She's never liked my parent either. And it will appear to her that I abandoned. I can't go back there, so. But I want to know that Zonia is safe. I think about that a lot. I don't know where she is, though. They would be hiding her somewhere. And since they stopped contacting you, you... Would you know how to get a hold of someone? To, did you have friends there that you could reach out to? Really, the only people I was able to get close to were Zonia and Oren, her, her brother. The Zonia that I portrayed in court was sort of a mixture of the two of them. Zonia really isn't. The Zonia that I created to be is not <laughs> anything like the real Zonia. Oren is very caring. He's very sweet. Um, she was not? She is critical and fierce and strategic. Everything that I needed to convince them she isn't. So I sort of, the two people that I spent the most time with, I tried to combine them, I guess. It worked as well as I could. Ironic in a way. A very clever strategy on your behalf. You're probably acting more like her than you thought. Thank you. You were raised with them, and something happened to her, no one told you what, and they just thrust you into her no. life. No, um, she was there. She, um... Oh. I had to make sure they didn't see her. I had to... There was a, a, a situation where I thought that Oren might get hurt. It was just becoming too dangerous, and I had... I knew what my duty was, and I knew that they hadn't found her yet. So... I'm sure she was pissed about it. I'm sure she's really angry with me, but... It's what I was raised to do. So... Sounds like a common theme among this group. What's well, the lack of choice and other people's expectations being thrust upon you? 
it need to be said, but it seems it does run through a few of you. You are safely away from that. We are very close to Crown Heart Hall, though. Hmm. Although well, they don't know this, me, it concerns me a bit. Me too. Well, changelings are full of wonders. Adding an actor to the midst. Eyes look towards you, Desmond. I assume you come from the Bay of Progress. I mean, you tell me what you know. Have you heard of Desmond before? <laughs> Afraid not. All right. <laughs> Should I have? I mean, of course. Uh... No, I'm sorry. Uh... You're all laying your cards bare face up. I've, I've been dishonest. Uh, I am from the Bay of Progress, yes. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that is. I'm actually. I'm actually jealous of y'all. You have full lives that you live that you can look back upon, but I can only remember maybe two years at most. Uh, the two things that I do know for sure, my name is and was Desmond. Uh, and I was only 11 when I became what I am now. I don't know if I still am. I don't know if I should be 13 now. Do I age? I don't. What, what, what were you, are you for? Yes. My question exactly. This bumps me. When I was a boy. A human boy? An elf as far as I'm aware, I don't I don't remember who I was. Ah, I just know what I was. What? Uh, I was a chore bot. That's what I was made into, I guess you could say. You had a life as a human boy and you were made into a chore bot I mean it's not completely uncommon is it not things it happen in the bay be. of progress uh that don't make it out progress to be made sometimes uh sacrifices also need to be made I don't understand why you are saying this with the utter calmness that you are projecting in this moment. Are you oh, not? I'm, I'm good at putting on a face, you know? You do not remember your life as a boy, a no. child. Do you know anyone I, they, from they that They may time? scrub those memories, but... I guess some stuck. That's why you don't um, want to go back there. I'd prefer not to, but I mean, there are things we need to do there. Is it common for you to know this about yourself, to remember that you are not always as you are now? I mean, I'm guessing I feel the emotions I've felt. I'm s scared of everything still. Hmm. I'm sorry, Desmond. I mean, some of you have memories. I'm sure you'd be happy to not have to remember. Do we have a choice as to whether or not we can think about them or not? This is not okay. This is unacceptable. Do you feel angry 
at all. I mean, yeah, there's people that pull lives from people to make these. For all I know, I mean, what if my life was terrible before this? What if this is a also a blessing? There's, I don't know everything. Do you want to know? Yeah. Also, I started, instead of looking back, start looking forward, you know? There's things to look forward to. I was set on becoming just a chore bot for the rest of my life, but then I started getting into stories and heroes, and I wanted to be one. There was the story of a boy who saved his entire land. He was nothing, really. No noble upbringing, no training. He was just a farmhand, really. But he saved his whole world, and I wanted to be that. Well, stop this apocalypse and you've got your if story, If he could be a hero, right? then so can I, right? Hmm. <laughs> Everyone is important, and everyone has potential, Desmond. Everyone. I'm very sorry for what has happened to you. Desmond, what can we do to make you feel safe or protected when we go there? I mean, I don't... The thing is, I don't feel like I would be in actual danger if I was there. It's just the internal struggle of being back, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd like to go there right now and lay waste to the entire place. They're not all like that. It's just a right, seedy we'll few in the dark corners, you know? Everywhere has people like this. some exceptions. Is this an unknown thing? Do Bay of Progress is known for its advancements. And the there's guilds, advancements, and then there's... You are underestimating the power of guilds and the power of those with immense wealth. It is not about what is acceptable. It's not about what is right. It's about what works. If you're going to be heading to the Bay of Progress, you need to keep that in your mind. If you're going there to vanquish evil, I'm afraid there is far too much in the mortal minds there. But there's a lot of good as well. The reality is that politics talks. Power, above all. And in that place, it is no greater known than... There is no law beyond the guild's law. I spent a lot of time in the capital. That's where I spent the majority of my life. If I told you only part of the rumors we heard coming out of the Bear Progress, it would give you nightmares for the rest of your days. Mm. You'd see Desmond, the hand kind of reaches up and touches yours and it's spring, and she just kind of smiles lightly to you, to you and says, mm. Maybe we'll remember everything together. Or start anew from here. Well, I 
is our duty, I suppose. However, to implore something many of you have not had in the past, or even I. Make it clear that it is your choice to do this. There is no shame in ever walking away from this. Otherwise, there is with Sorry. that in mind, I do have a confession to make. This is the most polite, patient, kind, and compassionate. I have been in the last 50 blessings, and it has been exhausting. <laughs> so if we are going to travel together, I'm going to try to relax a bit. Noted. However, if you are all to travel together, Just keep in your thoughts that sometimes kindness and patience do not achieve results. A little cruelty now, or a lot less later. We have time. Correct, we have time. We do. Learn one another's strengths. Guard one another's weaknesses. Get better at working together. And when we track down whoever this skin this one is. Show not a hint of mercy. All right. Well, with all of that being said, I suppose the next thing to do is... You start hearing shouts from outside. People sh sh shouting in the streets, calling. She leans up. You hear kind of like... A blaring voice kind of echoing out of the around the town, um, outside the building. Kind of ordering. People shuffling out of different rooms in this building as well. Anyone that was staying here, only a few people um, out onto the street. Well, I suppose our first test, maybe. If we are here for her, I will hide her. Is there a window? Uh, not in this room. No, I specifically okay. avoided it. Smart. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Can we make out any words? Uh, yeah, what just are they saying? unintelligible. From when in the house, it's kind of it's it's very like, you know, it's coming across very kind of like um, <sighs> muffled between the walls. Maybe it's a fire drill. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
don't think we're going to find out much about what's going on out there uh, sitting in here any longer. So I get the feeling they're going to come get us anyway. Take a look outside and then come back. I was going to go as well. All right. Let's go see. Uh, leaving the room. Um, she'd stay behind to, to keep guard over spring, but stepping out through the hallways and um, out towards the street, the door opened. Uh, the person running the kind of front desk out kind of just outside on the street on the, on the steps leading down to the main road. Uh, people gathering all around the different houses that kind of lie, lie deeper into the town. Um, the residents that you don't really see as much and they kind of start to gather around. And on the main street itself, uh, up on the staircase, you see uh, Mayor Salandro kind of opened his doors, the Svarts all kind of pointing their spears forward towards the main street, where there's a series of magi wearing this kind of lilac clothing robes, all kind of tightened around with almost like a, almost a militaristic kind of view on them. Uh, collars kind of coming up around their neck, um, hats that kind of are pulled back to kind of hide their hair, um, almost hooded. Um, eight of them stood around, kind of magic at the ready in their palms, and one stands kind of gliding just off the ground in the center. Um, he kind of, he's, he's, he's leaning, uh, almost like his back's kind of arched up, uh, up a little bit, like kind of projecting himself forward. Um, and calling across the entire town towards the, uh, the, the shadow tower in the center. You'd see this, the person kind of floating there is, um, his appearance half orc, um, this very deep kind of tinge of green to his to his uh, jawline, but quite thin uh, half orc, less of a kind of a broad structure, bone structure, quite thin. Um, his hair kind of tightened into like a top knot, um, pulled at the back. The only one with his hood down, but he has insignia on his chest, and he calls out across. I repeat. On behalf of Consort Rencaster, I am Inquisitor Harolix of the Consort's Initiative. We've detected a vast amount of magic from your town. All of you are to submit. We'll check licenses. All citizens line up. It echoes across the town. And the mayor kind of steps out, glaring. So we're going to go ahead and take a little five-minute break to uh, okay. refresh your drinks and whatnot. Use the loo and, uh, and catch you guys in just a few moments. we still got about 45 minutes left of the episode, and then we'll, uh, we'll end up okay. Uh, all right. See you in five. Shame. Chat. Uh, we will be ending up in about 45 minutes from now. Uh, and uh, we'll be doing the bingo just at the end as well, and then we'll finish up. Okay, uh, so go ahead and refill your drinks. Also, I I I made the updated sheets for level five. They're technically level five, but I forgot to import it into OBS before starting the stream. So, um, I'll have that for next week. Just got to put a reminder. All right, very back.
Okay, let's bring things back up in here. Uh, all right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hello. Uh, let me find better music for this. Uh, he didn't think I've got a, a tense town theme, but I'll, I'll just throw on... What's this Can one you like? make one with your mouth real quick? Yeah, please. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 it's, uh, 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 there you go. That feels tense. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks, loop. guys. Yeah, just yep. that. Um, yep. so bring it back into things. Uh, yeah, you would see this, this, uh, half orc in the center of town floating there, um, having kind of projected their voice and said that, uh, so Andrew, like, steps out onto the top of the stairs. What is the meaning of this? And... You'd see, like, his farts kind of, like, clicked around him. A couple of the magi step forward, holding their magic ready towards them. The town is to comply. And you hear his voice is going to be projected by magic. You can see it kind of rippling out. For you, Morgan, you can almost see the um, evocation magic just kind of seeping outwards as he's projecting mm. it. It's like a thermoturge almost. <clears throat> um, the magi start kind of going up. And uh, casting this cantrip. For the majors out there, you can do an arcana check if you want. Anyone who's capable of spell casting. I'll do one. Or. Uh, 16 Nine. cantrips count. 22. <laughs> uh, <gasps> sorry. The, 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 is it, you know what? If you pass the notes around in class, say it out loud, guys. Okay. <laughs> It sounded like you said his farts surround him. Yeah. It's what it sounded. We all heard it. That's you said farts. Yeah, that's what I thought immediately. <laughs> X V A R T S. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was farts. You said farts. farts. I'm, I'm going to rename the entire species. Um, we just got to with the teacher, dude. If it's yeah. X V, it would be Svarts. Uh, uh, apparently Zvart. no, Sam. It would Zvart. be farts. I said svarts. Svarts. Right? You said Zvart. I just Zvart. said svarts like that. It just, I said it faster. I came up. It wasn't. Uh, Twenty-two. Uh, yeah. Uh, for you, spellcasters, uh, 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 tack. You might not be familiar with this. Um, it's actually fitting that you are um, Morgane and and a little bit you and Drusser. This cantrip. When they scan it, you can see. Almost like a symbol appear in front of each of the people they're scanning in the streets. Um, this is a form of detecting someone's license level. Uh, though licenses for, for magical use are usually kept as pins or necklaces or anything like that, insignia that you can wear. Um, someone is, when someone is kind of almost inputted into a, a secret system, um, when they have your kind of license registered, uh, they, they almost create a marking for you. Um, to detect what level you should be. Uh, so it's almost this cantrip that has been developed to to detect what someone's allowed to use for magic-wise, um, what their license level is. Um, but it's not used outside of kind of the top-end inquisitors or, or people searching for mage use, yeah. Does the... With that in mind, does their, like, outfit, insignia, whatever, like, is, is that familiar to any of us who would know that, like, this is a thing? Um, like, are we like, oh, it's the magic police, yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, is it an order that we like we all know, or is it, are these just like just another group? And we're like, fuck, I'm now we say, got these guys on our asses. Tack, give me a. Yeah, let's go. Come on, baby. Give me. <clears throat> an, uh, I think I think more game would know this just for the fact that they're required to know for the crimes that yeah the you, you probably yeah yeah I'll, I'll say that as well i'll say morgan and tag both give me a history check 12. Ooh, nice yeah uh, you got that one, chat. You got that one, <laughs> chat. <Yeah. laughs> it, it's I okay. 22 on the arcana though. <laughs> you did, you did. So you would know, you know what their their purpose is. You just don't know this particular order, um, which makes sense uh, for you, yeah. Tack. Yeah. You would have heard of this order uh, uh, mostly by what he just shouted out. Uh, the consorts are a group of, um, as their name says, consorts towards a, a house. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the 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 leading house of beauty, um, and. 
they kind of all have a lot of power themselves, the consorts. There's five of them in total. Um, so here in Consort Rencaster and Consort's Initiative sounds like it's an order specifically to the high up end of, of, uh, of all weathers. So it seems to be almost like a privatized military unit, if you will. Um, Got it. You'd see as he kind of like leans okay. up. <clears throat> and Solandra kind of steps to the fire end. You will not search the people of my town. Solandra. He lands, begins walking straight through the, uh, with his hands kind of crossed behind his back. You are denying the consorts of all weathers. The search of magic to move this town here is vast. We are in search of something greater than you. Andrew can step forward. Whatever you're in search of has nothing to do with my town. We have the right to be here. And no one casts a spell here. You see one of the magi step up towards your group. Uh, and cast a cantrip with that, like, who, who's, what, what kind of order you guys stood in? Carlisle would have been pretty up in the front since he was already talking. Carlisle and Tack went out first, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um... I'd probably be in the middle. I'd be in the middle, too. Cast a cantrip over mm. you, Carlisle. Nothing shows up. Um, steps to the side. Uh, does it to you, V? Mm-hmm. Nothing comes up. To you, Desmond? Do you have a license? I don't think I would. No. Ro-ro. Doesn't see. Steps along to you, Andrasa does it to you. I'm just standing there with my arms crossed, annoyed. Uh, you're level three, right? Mm-hmm. That, that mm-hmm. appears and you go... Steps along again. Uh, to you, Morgane, does it to you? Mm-hmm. I think you're also level three. I'm level two. You're level two? Mm. Notices that. Does it to you, Tack? You level two? I don't have a license. You have a license at all. Okay. Twinsies. It. <laughs> you hear the major I speak is the kind of Salandro and, and the person the person's walking towards Salandro in the center of town. Is there anyone else inside? Are they asking us? Yeah. I mean it's an inn. Our room is empty. I'll go inside and I'll make sure that there's no one else hiding away in there. Steps past you. And walks into it. What is your name, Mayor? I'm Mayor Solandral. This is Sigenbrat. You have no right to be here to this. You are in all weathers. You will abide by our laws. We are searching for escaped magi. Ones capable of great magic. Warping reality. On hearing this, Morgane's going to follow the other guy back into the inn. Okay. Escaped from where? his head to- turned towards you in the crowd. It is unimportant. We are looking for a tiefling. I'd like to... Well, no, never mind. Go ahead. Blue shade. A petrified face, partially. Guys, his eyes across the entire group. And looks around. The mayor goes, Well, we're not harboring him here. Again, leave my town. 
we have jurisdiction over your town when you were in all weathers. If you wanted me to drag every single member of this place down to our city and throw you in a cell whilst we interrogate every one of you to find out how this town moved, <clears throat> you hear an interruption from behind. On the road, kind of a little bit further back, you hear... Actually, I don't think you can do that. And you see kind of long flowing kind of leaf-like robe uh, around a tunic. Uh, orange uh, leaves, twigs, and kind of almost leather mixed into it. Their hair kind of the same thing as well. Very pointy ears, very kind of pointy expression. Only about five foot four, quite quite short on the short end. Um, this, this kind of man steps forward. A bugbear to his side who's got kind of almost this, this coloration across all of his fur that's uh, brighter and uh, you can see almost kind of becomes like a little bit blue around the center, around the chest. Kind of big, broad bugbear wearing almost this kind of autumn-like uh, cloak on his back as well. And a few others stepping onto the land. Um, you see the Inquisitor turn and, and kind of glare back towards them. And who might you be? Well, I'm Lyran of the Fall. And I don't think you do have jurisdiction over here. You're in the Glam Glades, after all. We haven't been informed of an Inquisition coming through our area. This is beyond... Master Lyran, we are... This comes from the consort themselves. We weren't informed. So unless you want another crisis on your hands, where well, we go back and we speak to the Autumn Ladron about how you are here disturbing... Visitors to our land. Go ahead, drag them down to the city. See the Inquisitor turn. Inside the room you're in, Morgane, you see the person's mm. kind of looking through the open rooms and go straight towards the door where uh, Sister Abigail is. Mm. And you hear, as he's about to grab the handle, enough. Rings out through the heads, kind of almost like echoing. Like, enough. Enough, enough, enough. Back to the streets. And he stops at the handle, turns back, and like looks at you. What are you doing inside? Get back on the street. We, is it only them that hear it? No, it echoes out as if he's kind of shouted it across the street. I believe that message was intended for you, not me. He kind of steps to his side and he looks at you. Your adornment is not lost on me. And wanders around and walks back out onto the streets. You see the Inquisitor step towards the uh, kind of autumn wearing figures. Very well. I return when we have the right jurisdiction for this. I return with permission. Allow your autumn Aladrin to learn that. Come! And calls towards his major, and they all come together, and then <laughs> teleport out of there. Casting teleport. Bye! You all of the town kind of muttering and, and whatnot. Um, Salandra kind of like turns, he's talking to some of his guards, and uh, the, the kind of autumn wearing uh, uh, elven man, kind of an orange tone to his skin, uh, Aladrin himself, if any of you have seen them. Um, Sylvan of their species kind of steps forward uh, begins kind of chuckling as well welcome everyone to the glam glades we weren't expecting you I assume you've come for the festival we'll be happy to have you we saw your town up here during our hunt is it Salandru he called if I could have a word and he begins walking past um, the crowds kind of start dispersing uh the bugbear kind of stands there, chuckling to himself, and he steps forward, kind of folds his arms, and the others start mingling, talking to the crowd. Some of them just bringing up their their supplies, like a couple of fresh kills of these kind of deer. You can see all these kind of these these almost like zebra-like deer, where they've kind of almost like a tiger-like pattern. But then when it comes to the head, there's a long kind of deer elk look to them. Um, they put them onto like carts at the front. Uh, the bugbear kind of stands and uh, walks over towards nearer to you guys and says, "Oh, worry not, folks." <laughs> Old Jules, you know, 
It's typical of this place. Go about your business. It's all fine. It's all fine. Are you new here? He looks across to all of you guys. We are. Welcome to the Glam Glades. Oh, yeah. I mean, the... ignore them. <laughs> What's the festival all about, then? Oh, it's the Autumn Festival. It's a hunt. A tournament. Have you got anyone here who fights or interested yes. in a little competition? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, welcome to the Glam Glades, then. Our encampment's not about three miles from here. If you're interested in coming and joining the tournament, look into anyone that can. Fantastic. Well, I better follow him after Lyran before he gets himself in trouble anymore. If you need anything from us, just go and ask. We, uh, there's no sign up to show up to the, uh, the tournament grounds. So be careful out there in the woodland. Some of the fair creatures will be pretty <laughs> dangerous today. And he <clears throat> walks past. As you can see, you can see this massive gash down his back, bleeding through some oh, no. bandages. <gasps> oh, um, and you see him kind of like lean back and like kind of reach for one and pulls like a bandage back over one of them, uh, chuckling as he walks up towards the staircase. Uh, but the tank returns to normal. <laughs> It was sort of I'm like, it's okay, buddy. Like, I make that face. <laughs> <laughs> well. Quite exciting. We we should all fight to become stronger. Yes? In a tournament. Mm. All right. Is Morgane back by now? Did she come out? Did you come out? Oh, with the mage? Yeah, because ma if, yeah. if if Morgane was okay. following mm. the mage, then uh, then the mage's already mm. left now, so Morgane, you would have... Yeah, Morgane will rejoin okay. the group. All right. What should we say? A tournament a few miles down the road? What's the harm in at least looking into it? Fair. I do a few things I need to do around town before we go, but... Um... I'm certainly amenable to checking it out, as they say. We might meet a few interesting characters. Indeed. Looks like they're still on the hunt for Kios. Right. I did get a letter. Um, I don't think anyone has quite clear on what happened yet which I guess makes sense because it hasn't been that long um but they don't I think have all the details um at the very least they don't know what kind of magic was involved so I think that's good for now um I don't think it will go well once that's discovered. So I think the friends we can make now will probably be quite useful. Mm. Where to now? Should we check with Abigail? Is she all right, Sir Morgan, when he went in? Thankfully, he didn't get to the door. Okay, good. Um, right, well, I think that's a good idea, V. Maybe we go in and we say, hey, you know, here's where we are, here's what's going on, and make our plans to leave. All right. Okay. Let's go back inside. <clears throat> yeah, she would. She'd meet you at the door once you get there. In the meanwhile, I remain here. I'll try and establish some sort of ground for, uh, in case everything here goes wrong. But 
perhaps we can try and keep in contact in some means. Messages back and forth if we can. And I'll keep you updated if anything new happens. From here, all are right. you heading all the way to the Bay of Progress? I think that was the original plan. Um, it sounds like there's a tournament a couple miles down the road, so we're going to check that out first to get the lay of the Glam Glades, I guess. Mm. And then head out. All right. Are you going to stick here at Sigenbrot and travel with it? Well, it will stay here for some weeks. Sure. Uh, if you are not back by then, is there a place I should tell it to go? Try and influence it to go somewhere in particular? Hmm. Um, I don't know. Obviously, we're heading that way. If they were to go to the Bay of Progress, we'd be able to see each other. Um, you can always... Um, Leave a message for me with Lord Merrin of House Tien, um, and he can make sure that I get it. Very well. Um, All right. But in that case, I'll keep in touch with you, and I'll try and build up some relation with Salandrel here, so that I might have some influence on where we go next. All right. Well... If it is to be some time since I see you again, good luck. En enjoy the rest of the slumber party. <laughs> oh, Lee. She's a treasure. <laughs> okay. She returns back into the room. Above board, I just need to grab a few things from the town, but we don't have to. Well, I was going to say, that. is there anything in particular yeah. you want to get from uh, Sig and Brat for heading out? Mm. Anything you want to do before journeying on the road once more? I don't think I there was anything we needed as a group, too. Can't recall. Yeah, I can't recall I either. Know. Uh, I wouldn't mind having Desmond just confirm that the cloak I got wasn't magic or anything. Oh, uh, yeah, there you we go. We need to sell the greaves. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Um, I need to buy a couple of things from Vanderville. I think there might have been a couple other things we want to sell, too. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we can go to Vanderville's, but before you do, mm -hmm. are you casting, uh, Identify on the cloak? Yeah, I'll see. Okay. If it is. In which case, uh, you would successfully identify. Do you see that? Did that come up on screen for you guys? If it didn't. No, let me do this. No. no. There you go. Oh, there we go. Now it did. Ew, look at that. Ooh. The cloak Ooh. of elven Ooh. kind. Ah. Let's see. While you wear this cloak with its hood up, wisdom perception checks made to see you have disadvantage, and you have advantage on uh, dexterity stealth checks made to hide. As the cloak's color shifts to camouflage, you pulling the oh. hood up or down requires an action. That's sick. That's so cool. Very nice. That is sick. Oh, yeah. Puts on immediate. What? <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs> Look at the back. It was just here. <laughs> this thing is good at hiding you. Yeah, it's uh, real interesting. in this. Were you not expecting it? Uh, no, uh, honestly, when I sent them that letter, I actually told them uh, I did not need any payment for uh, the job. So uh, most of this was a surprise to me. Oh, was it the hospital you worked at? <laughs> Oh, uh, no, it was, um, uh, well, it was escorters for escorting the Redot down south. Oh. 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 Well. I'm sorry. I, 
Did you know her long? Yeah, I knew her. I knew her for quite a time. I made quite a few trips on out that way. You know, I think it's how they would have wanted to go. So. Take some peace in that, I guess. Good way to look at it. Do we have anything? I need to, um, get rid of these greaves. To Vanderville, and I'd like to get a couple scrolls. Does anybody have anything else you need to sell or buy or anything? No, but I will accompany. We can see what Richard's wearing today. I don't care. <laughs> Brie cares. That was Shake good RP because we know that Brie actually cares a fucking lot. Richard. <laughs> well, inside uh, the spell counter, uh, the moment you walk in, uh, towards the center of the room, you will see uh, on the back of uh, Richard, who's wearing a long cleric's outfit with a golden eyeliner that kind of drips down to look like a cleric almost. Um, a little kind of almost Pope's hat on. Um, you can see it's holding a stick um, outward in both its kind of palms, and there's an orb on the end. Uh, the face of a fire genasi is on the end of this orb. Um, kind of burning back hair that kind of gleams and causes the back of the globe to kind of almost illuminate uh, the front of Richard's face. And right in front of that, pacing back and forth, is Vanderville. Um, he goes... I don't care. Uh, I, uh, I know my role, Darisha, all right? And when I do, <laughs> you'll be sorry, okay? I've been preparing all this time. And you just kind of hear this muffled voice say, I hope so. The next time I see you, Vanderbilt, it will probably be your last. <laughs> yes, I'll run all the theatrics. All right, goodbye now. Goodbye. I've got customers. And you see him kind of flick his hand and the wall goes <laughs> and fades away. <laughs> And then he takes the stick. Well, right? a good time to come back. Holds it down, yeah, right? That was perfect. Puts it to the oh side. My and he goes, God. Oh, hello, my friend. Yeah, Master Vanderbilt, is everything all right? Oh, don't worry about that. Just the past coming to kick me in the ass. <laughs> oh, did you... Are you all right? Are you open for business? Of course. All right. I bang. Uh, it's a bit of both, I think. Were you interested right. in those greaves? Oh, the weird fucking ones. Yes. Yeah, the ones with the screaming. Right, I'll take yes. them out of my bag. How much do you want for it? I don't know. Anyone ideas on how much creepy greaves uh, would go uh, for? Indrasa has no frame of reference for 5, how much 5,000 beans. <laughs> 5,000 gold. I'm going 5,000 go fuck yourselves. That's way overpriced. I, <laughs> how about I give you 500 gold? 500? Hmm. All right, make a counter off of that. What can you get with 500 gold? I just sort of look at everyone else. <laughs> how much is that? What is that? Is that good? So what do you have for sale for about 500? What do I have for sale? Good question. Uh, oh, also I've got these tablets. I'll pull out the tablets that we good. found in the death vault. Oh, um, sell those to a historian. I couldn't give a shit unless they're magical. Historian? That's right. I don't actually know if they're magical or not, but I assume uh, they're Those are just, I think those are just commerce-based, like uh, you can sell them. Uh, I don't know, man. You said stolen tablets from death vault. Mm hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, for 500 gold, uh, you're talking uh, up to like his uncommon section of stuff. Um, <clears throat> you could buy. Uh, there's a whole bunch. Uh, there's a lot of common items, there's a lot of uncommon items. Um, if you'd like, for the sake of time, I can kind of show you a lot of them uh, between the streams, or uh, we can look at them start next stream and say, like, you know, you look through that if you would like yeah, to have bought one. Yeah, let's do that. Um, but blah for the sale. If you, was, all right, okay. So to buy the to to yeah, mm, 
tell you what, I'll give you 650 gold for them. Mm. Are you using them? No, I think that seems... I think no, that seems I'm bloody sorry. fair. What about 660? I'm not it's interested just that it's in them anymore. To divide. I really fucking hate <laughs> handlers like that. Like that gets <laughs> under my skin. I, you know what? Oh, 650 is fine. I know. Uh, <laughs> all right. I just don't want to carry them. <laughs> Goes and gets the money <gasps> cuts out. God. Uh, wraps up your. Did we your divvy up the 1,000 that we got, by the way? Yeah, we I think so. should have. So, whatever. Divide by six. That's what you get. <clears throat> So, uh, here's so your 650. So, and then 650. And he takes your... Right, uh, thank you. Takes the grease across and goes, Oh, very spooky. All right. He takes you wear them. So, I don't wear my items, no. <laughs> but if you ever <laughs> are interested nice. in buying something extremely expensive, I do have something in stock. Something new? No, but something you probably oh. haven't seen. What is it? Only the greatest fruit to have ever grown. Oh, oh, interesting. Interesting. I showed you the fruit? Yeah, it's the fruit. From Why the, the fuck are you not begging me for the fruit? <laughs> what are we going to do with one fruit? Master Vanderbilt. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> guess it's really out of price range. Sure. Um, okay, fine. Uh, well, <laughs> what else? Is there anything else you'd like to get? Yes, there he is. I'm going to walk over by the scrolls. What? Uh, well, everyone else does whatever. Um, all right. You could probably I just will. send me a list of them, just because we've got a wrap in yeah. two minutes. So yeah. Scrolls, it, as long as he's got any other ones, you, you can just go ahead and buy like a few of the scrolls, uh, and he would, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the, 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 the cost price, because uh, I'd have to double check again what scrolls cost in a general means. I wrote them all down, don't worry, dear. Okay, yeah, just <laughs> knock off the ones you need, um, <laughs> and let me know how much gold you spent. Um, all right. Perfect. <clears throat> That's all I needed. Are those cool again. goth boots still there? Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. I still have them, the funeral the marchers. The funeral boots? Yeah. New interest, eh? Yeah, I'm trying to Get remember them. what they are. What they Get what they do. I just remember While wearing these black them. leather boots, you could choose to not fall prone when you reach zero hit points. Whether you make death saving throws while unconscious... Sorry, whenever you make death saving throws whilst unconscious, you gain a walking speed of 10 feet and tremescence out to a range of 10 feet until the end of your turn. You're still blind beyond this range, and you can choose which direction to walk in which unconscious, uh, walk mm. in while unconscious in this way. So essentially, once you're down also, to zero, you can keep moving. Yeah. They're goth, so just saying. Yeah, they were so, great. They were 300, right? I believe so. How I want many, them. How many right. beans? Yeah! What do you are want? Worth? How many beans are they worth? Oh, it's it's okay, V. I can. I'll just. I can just buy. You yeah, can I keep can't. Yeah, I need it. to earn some gold nowadays. I can't just keep filling my tummy. Uh, I, but I'm willing to get the rest of the beans off you for a little bit of gold. No. I'm All right. Not offering. Well. <laughs> okay. I like my tummy. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if uh... <clears throat> If there's anything else, we'll just, you can peruse through the gear if you like. What we'll do right. is we can come back to this at the start of next episode. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But with. Because, <clears throat> yeah, because I imagine you guys would want to do a little browsing as well. But with the intention of looking through this gear and then leaving Sigmund behind to take the road heading southwest into. The Glam Glades to potentially do a tournament if you wish to come across different creatures to head all the way towards the Bay of Progress where guilds and companies and corporations rule the land. And we'll leave it there for tonight. We'll do the quick bingo and finish things up because we have an out. Um, so let me bring up the bingo. Yeah, I, think I, might, I think I might have to go now. So I'll leave my camera on. But okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, man. Bye, I can kick you out the bye, bye, channel. Bye. Cheers, man. Bye, See you, buddy. Bye, tomato. <clears throat> We'll do the quick old bingo you know, now for you guys. You know what's great is his outro will be the same as usual. That's <laughs> fair. Actually true. True. Uh, <laughs> all right. Where is it posted? Oh, there it is. Okay. 
Uh, you'd have to load up the stream as per usual because I have no means of easily doing this otherwise. Because if mm. I start capturing this, it's going to fuck up all the cams because Discord. Uh, but the bingo uh, has been made by Swippin. Uh, the first one on the list is a net 20, which was the first roll of the night. Uh, yeah. Morgan. Uh, Morgan gets a, a lead on an ingredient. No. Cast pre session banter. I don't think no. so. No? Okay. No. Not really today. Kind of wholesome today. Was it wholesome? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you really missed out. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I sit there listening to the theme song, seeing your your faces in silence. It's <laughs> really heartwarming. Uh, Tack tries to keep party on on task. Success option. Not necessary. No, not yeah. necessary. Yeah, stayed on task. Just true. fine. We learned a lot about your characters. Good job, us. Nat 1. Mm -hmm. We did get a Nat 1. The same man who got the Nat 20. Yeah. NPC tries Duality. to scam party members. 500, How much were those please. greens worth? Come on. Oh, come on uh, now. What quality were they? Rare. Uh, I don't remember, dear. More. They seemed quite Although, nice. <laughs> arguably, what is something worth if you don't have a buyer? You yeah. Know? Who Define knows? scam. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. Define scam. For him. Define scam. It's just those guys scammed to... or hustled. Are they the those, same? Like... Those guys didn't have a warrant. To be searching us for magic. That's kind of what's mm, Scam. I don't know if they're True. scamming you there. <laughs> I don't know that they, they were, though, because they didn't have jurisdiction, according to the uh, head of the Autumn Did you call that so, scamming, yeah. though? It wouldn't oh. scam yeah, you. Totally. It would be a scam if they, they were trying to scam actually... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if they weren't actually uh, magic cops. Yeah, if they yeah. were pretending to be yeah. the magic cops, but <laughs> they, they weren't. <laughs> then it would be a scam. We, can, we won't check your licenses if you don't add 50 gold to us to the secret number. <laughs> Uh, first, or except others... first, actually take that fifty gold and buy gift cards with it, and then give us the gift cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that seems weird. Oh wait, not those gift cards. Uh, <laughs> first, all weather's NPC local has southern accent. No, mm -hmm. uh, Andrusa makes out of touch noble remark. What? I mean, you did say what is five hundred gold? Well, what is? <laughs> yeah, what can you even buy with five hundred gold? What is that? Very Lucy on blue at the moment. Yeah, is it yeah. a banana, Michael? How much? <laughs> a banana $10. 25 plus ability check. Yeah, we had a 28 on that first roll. Uh, new Richard outfit. Yep. Yes. New NPC yep. described yes. with anything long flowing. Fuck off. Yep. Oh, yeah. We did. Fire gets flowing. waylaid no. en route to town. No, you didn't leave the town. Uh, free space. Cursed pants sold. Uh, the yes. Greaves, yep, they were sold. Yep. NPC who's just a weird little guy. No. <laughs> Who? Uh... The 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 guy, the guy in the furniture shop, the furniture letter shop. Oh, he's oh, a the goblin. Guy. He's, he's just weird little constantly he's a, little a guy. weird little guy. <laughs> yeah, oh, sure, I'll give it to you. Party gets in trouble with the weird local law. Guy. Uh, nearly, no. but no, almost, almost. no. Wow. Third level spell cast by PC. No, no. wilderness encounter. No party bonding time. Mm. Yes. Desmond Thing. shows off new fifth level subclass feature. Sadness. Yeah. If that's shows be... off trauma. Yeah. You're yeah. all going to be trauma. so disappointed. <laughs> in, in still sadness. Yeah. Uh, in still player depression. asks DM to spell out a name. You did have to spell uh, we out thought the that king. His name was farts. <laughs> and yeah, and we did. That counts. It's good enough. We made you repeat it like eight and times. And you specifically spelled it out loud on stream yep. because we were like, yep. is that guy's name farts? <laughs> It's I didn't the creatures. Think it was farts it's, for the record, Joe. Thank you, man. Uh, uh, inspiration it was farts. for this episode. Was, no, no, <laughs> uh, no. It's childish. For this episode. <laughs> it's these guys. Retroactive. Dude. It's these guys. These guys. Oh, we know. Farts. It's just that you said farts. Farts. We, we know yeah. what they are. Uh, yeah. V acts farts like a I've tourist. I've never seen them. Every, every day. Yeah. Every, every day. day. Carlisle yeah, plays the Good Samaritan. You know what a slumber party was? Did Carlisle play Good Samaritan? He was first to introduce himself as true. a freaking yeah. great gesture. That's true. That's true. And the way that he pitched good. himself was like, I, I am just feel like I need to be here because I yeah. can do more good with this group. You know? Mm. Yeah. yeah. New homebrew yep, yep. race species NPC. No. Farts. No? Oh. No. <laughs> Farts. And then Magic Bean Haggling. Yes. Almost. Yes. You guys came yes. so close. <laughs> so close. So like, many like, almost bangers. Yeah. Damn, dude. Well, Damn. uh, such ends episode 16 everyone thank you so much everyone for playing i appreciate it. let's go around and say some goodbyes and then uh, i'll let you get going off with your nights 
Uh, I mm. was saying this on the break as well, by the way. I actually made the level five block thing and I forgot to put it on OBS today. Uh, so that'll Rip. be out there next week, yeah. Damn. They, are, they are level five. Um, Dodger. Hi. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Dodger. You can find me at Dex Bonus on pretty much everything. It's next fest week. Ooh. Uh, hey. But, uh, but Ooh. because um, I'm in England, uh, I can't actually start participating in next fest week until Tuesday. Is that but true? But most of this. Yeah, what the because hell, I, man. It goes yeah. on yeah, Monday. They, yeah. The, the demos go live when it's basically like Aww. late afternoon for yeah, us, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. And I'm done streaming by then. Anyways, uh, but yeah, most of this week uh, is going to just be playing demos. So, um, nice. yeah. Are you doing that, Joe? Uh, I might Are you gonna be do playing this week. Live a demo week. I, I'm, yeah, I might do. I'm a bit GTA addicted right now, but I'd probably throw in some demos. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, if, if there are so any that fun. I think you'd like, I'll pass them along. Yes, do that. 100% do that because there's always some demos. Yeah, yeah, in there. yeah. Uh, there's a new Dark and Darker one that's really good. Uh, I was playing Benji mm -hmm. yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Sham Strippin'. Yo, Scam strip it. That's me. Wow. Damn. You've you probably heard that one. That's, I that was Richard. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, buddy. TV slash stripping. He's not a scammer. Uh, I kind of am. <laughs> but Sometimes. Occasional yeah. scammer. So that's your badge. Are you Let's actually a cop yeah. or not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He probably knows more than most US cops, to be fair, by now with uh, playing Connor. <laughs> Uh, Twitch.tv <laughs> slash tomato. Yeah, yeah, that's fair, actually. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, tomato, do you want to shout yourself out? All right, cool. Well Rebound. Hi, I am on my final month of partner plus push. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Oh. Let's go. So you close. See, they've just improved it as well to make it easier. Yeah, but that, I don't get that. You don't get that? It's not yeah. active yet. I know. It's like cool. a little carrot dangle in my face. Yeah. So you have the... Wait, so you still have the old rules of like no That's prime, no gift? I got to get 350. Okay. Oh, no, that's still, that's still part yeah. of the rules. It's 300 is the new rule. Yeah. Oh. It, they okay. just lowered it to 300, but it doesn't go live until May. So, you know. No. Cool. It's fine. It's fine. Ooh. We got the past two months. This one should be just yeah. as easy. Yeah, you got it's it. also my birthday month. So you know, yeah. Let's go. you have to give me a present. That's the rule. <laughs> Subscribe. The rules. She doesn't make them. I don't Sorry. make them. <laughs> Shane. She, she just made them. Hi, I'm Shane. <laughs> Surprisingly, I might actually make that one before partner plus that they just added that yeah. I didn't expect. Yeah, that's yeah, the 64 right. to, Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. That one's hey, nice. Hell so, yeah. yeah. Actually, I qualify for something on Twitch. That's weird. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Hell fucking yeah. That's awesome, dude. Hell yeah, yeah. 64. Deserve. Uh, but I'm going to be streaming right after this with my sister playing oh. Dead Island 2. What? And that'll be oh, fun. fun. Oh, fun. Oh. Oh, that's so cute. Gives it my sister. A hawk duo. Yeah. Aw. Uh, a hawk right, duo. I'll, I'll sub a little raidy raid. Uh, oh, gee. Guys, it's not going to come as a shock to you that I do not qualify for 6040 or Partner <laughs> Plus because I streamed six times in uh, 2023. You actually qualify 20... for a worse right now. You get 40%. Yeah. Wait, so really? 2024 is going to be my year. <laughs> so fucked. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set achievable goals right now. I'm going for 12 streams, just yeah. 12 mm. streams, right? It's going to have to be two in one month because I missed year. January. But I believe that this is oh, achievable man. and I can do it with your help. So <laughs> you already failed to do it once a month in the first month. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did you know that my dog was dying that's and I had fair. a lot of that's, stress? That's, and that's so I couldn't stream cut. on that's the weekend because I was taking care of my dog who just that's passed Joe. away this week. That's but that's fair. cool. Thanks for reminding me. I think Joe might be the worst wow, person. Joe. It's crazy. What the hell? So man. what I'm saying is that this Saturday will now be a stream dedicated to the memory of my dog who just passed away. Thanks, Joe. Um, that's cool. What the it's hell, too man? Twitch.tv forward slash show lady gamer. If you want to talk about dogs, oh my you know where to go. Thanks, Twitch. Joe. Uh Hey it's guys! In the dog house. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna vomit. Twitch.tv uh, uh, slash Joe Fudge. Uh, hey, there's a patron. You can see behind the scenes stuff like the notes for this episode. 
Uh, and and monsters and all sorts of cool stuff. There's actually some fun things going up there. The Patreon got to see that creature that was chasing you. Uh, but you guys haven't seen it yet, so I thought I'd show that. Oh. What uh, the fuck? Everyone, go yeah. and join the Patreon right now. Let's if you go want see. a little spoiler of an image. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll be back next week for episode 17. Uh, we should be, we're out of the holiday running now, so uh, back onto our usual schedule, and we'll see you week after week as we dive deeper into the story hey. of Sudden Thanks, everyone, for coming out. I appreciate it. Here's the raid towards Shane. Please go and watch our boy uh, play some Dead Island 2. And uh, we'll yes. see you next time. All right, guys. Bye -bye. Uh, I can't click right Bye. now for three seconds, so just keep standing by. Oh, no. Goodbye. Bye. There it is. Bye. There it is. Bye. Cool. Bye. <laughs>